Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Pongazi William and today we're going to be doing a chit chat. Get ready with me. <laughs> so I'm starting the video off for the first time, I think, without the makeup on. So like before I even start the video, like this is the beginning of the video, the process, everything. I'm doing so just because like I don't know. How I'm gonna be feeling by the end of this video? Maybe I'll just be like saying goodbye and like <laughs> exiting because I might be emotional. Um, I just already am anyway. But I just wanted to give out a few disclaimers because wow, in a new setting, um, so there's like this light thing happening here behind me. That's just like the blinds. I've tried to like switch them up and all these things, but it's really not working. And it's a little bit empty in the room that I'm filming in, so there might be a slight echo. Or just something wrong with the sound like I've been trying to test it out and the mic that I want to get is not available yet so we are here but hopefully you guys can like hear me well enough and everything else is not just too distracting so that the message doesn't um, get across and things like that and I'm definitely going to be talking about a lot of the issues that are happening all around the world today in this like current day and age and some of them might honestly have me emotional but I suppose this is part of the whole process of sharing, talking and opening discussions and things like that. So yeah, let's get into the video. So starting off, I haven't done my brows and usually I start off with my brows done but not today. We're going to be starting from scratch um, I've laid my hair the hair is from Ali Grace and I have dyed it black and I just used some got to be glue to lay it down um, I also have a lot of new makeup that I'm going to be trying out today after they allowed us to go out and they open up the makeup section we still knocked down but like when they opened up the makeup section I really went in and <laughs> Maybe I went a little bit ham, but also it was the first time I was buying makeup, like a few items in a very long time. Possibly, definitely the first time this year, but possibly in like almost a full year. Because like last year this time, I was, this was around when I was admitted to hospital for the first time. So yeah, um, I'm going to try and do my eyebrows as much as possible on camera. You guys know I never do this because they take forever. And I also want to be able to talk. So I did write down a couple points so that I can move through the things quite swiftly. Because we all know I love to talk. Like I could be here for three hours talking about all of these things. Um, so I'm just trying to get everything to be clear and concise and, and to make sense as a whole. Products. I'm just going to use... This is a Makeup Revolution like um, eyebrow pencil but I just use the spoolie now. And then I'm going to use this Got To Be Glued. Um, glue actually to keep my eyebrows up. I just found that my eyebrows are, I wouldn't say that they're bushy, but they actually are curly, even though there's not a lot of them. They're quite curly, so sometimes eyebrow gels don't really work as well as I'd want them to, so I just go all the way with this. And then I'm going to be trying out this new product, which is a Rimmel London Brow Shake Filling Powder. I haven't opened it, so I have no idea what it looks like or how it works. Also, if I'm looking to like this side, that's where my mirror is, so yeah. So, um, the reason I actually wanted to film this video, and I've been wanting to film this video for two weeks now, um, and I wrote these notes down two weeks ago, and I've just been really adding to them as things have been happening and changing around the world and in our country. It's been, honestly, a lot. Um... So, I did it because I wanted to do like a mental health check. So I wanted to do a video about that really, mainly, and just talk about that. Um, and then all these other things came up which obviously affect our mental health as just people and things like that. Um, so, to start off where I am mentally, because this is a question that I get literally every day, like there's a new DM every day. How are you? Are you okay? How's your mental health? And all of that. So, to tell you guys, I... Uh, mm, like, I wouldn't say it's great. I'm not gonna lie. It's not great, but I 
I'm somewhat able to carry on every day and I think that's what I found to be like something really important to just be able to carry on and to choose to carry on um, sometimes that's more than enough even though it seems like the bare minimum but sometimes that's more than enough and that's where I am um, it really hasn't been easy oh my gosh this is a powder that is black there's no way this is going to look good on my brows no way oh no I'm going to make this work somehow I'm going to use this essence eyeliner pen which is brown and I'm going to try and draw in some hairs to balance out the black and the brown going on here and then obviously we know something that has been I mean it's been going on for a really long time to be quite honest like Black Lives Matter has been a thing like it's been a, a movement and a, a struggle that has been fought for a while and in many different ways like let's not get it twisted it hasn't just always been like oh Black Lives Matter it's been like other incidents that happen and they do correlate with black people being put down so it's 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 been happening for a while but now it's seeing a lot more attention which is great and um it's definitely something that i feel like on social media i've been wanting to talk about but i am honestly still dealing with the gold reef city incident from last year and if you don't know what that is, so last year I went to Gold Reef and it was actually on a date. Um, and it was the person's first time at Gold Reef, so I was just trying to get this like really great experience going for them and stuff like that. And then, I actually posted this on my Instagram. But then we were standing, so we went during the week, sorry, let me just try and tell this properly. We went during the week and there were a lot of schools i think it was like a wednesday or something there were a lot of school children um like grade sevens primary school like that and then we went to this one particular ride which usually gets like really full these brows are we're gonna try and fix them with some concealer and a gopro concealer in the color kind of toffee we get to this one ride and the line is really long but a lot of people were just like skipping the line and things like that and people let them go and a lot of these people happen to be white people and then a there's a group of students actually that were in line it was a group of black girls we later found out they were like grade seven girls they were standing in line and then I don't know what happened, but like I think the teacher asked for something. So then this girl, because she didn't want to leave the line, she actually asked the teacher. Uh, she actually asked everyone to like send down this huge teddy bear so that the teacher, I suppose, would get it or something like that. Um. So the girl that was in the line goes to the teacher. I suppose the teacher called or something like that, and she goes to the teacher. When she comes back, a group of like white ladies, maybe not a group, like two old white ladies, not under the age of fifty try to block her and said she can't go back in when they've let other white people through and she was the first black person to try and go through and they were stopping her and this didn't sit well with me and long story short I basically ended up in a screaming match with a white lady who was literally physically pushing a 13 year old child when she's like 50 telling her that she can't back, get back into the line when her teacher called and this little girl was crying her eyes out and this lady did not care and i was not going to stand for it because everyone else seemed okay and they were just watching the whole incident unfold obviously that kind of you know dampened the date i was on because now i'm like this crazy maniac person who's screaming at white people telling them that they're racist when i'm just trying to get on a ride and all of that so i was really um affected by that and I think it affected me because it's like, I wish I had someone who would have done what I did for those girls when I was in situations where white people were racist towards me and I was a kid and I felt helpless. And afterwards they did thank me, which was, I mean, all that needed to happen is that they knew that other black people had their back, you know? And I think that was very important. Like out of everything, I will take that with me. But it obviously scarred me because it was just, 
Whenever you have to deal with racism, it doesn't matter how small it is, it will scar you. And I think that's another thing that I need to stress is that even if you think, oh no, but as black people, we deal with it, you know, we've been through much worse, other black people have been through much worse, it does not mean that you're not going to get scarred by your encounter, however small you think it is. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with my eye makeup today. Um, I'm not doing anything spectacular. So, don't expect anything great. I usually never do it this way, but I'm just like, okay, we're already here, we've done the eyebrows. Talking about concealers, well, we weren't, but now we are. Um, I actually bought a few, and I start. I bought, like, from Smudge. So, I really want to try out new concealers. As you guys know, like, two months ago, I started using the Sweat and Wild concealer, which I really, really liked. But I was like, I want to use other affordable concealers and see how they're working out and I actually used to use the, the blinders and I think they were about 20 around when I first started buying them in like 2017 around there and they're so good so when I saw that they have like complexion products and clicks I was like I need to try them out and these they actually came as buy two and get one free so three for two two for three you know what I mean and I bought two different colors, so the lighter one is called Ivory and then this one is Soft Beige. So I feel like this one would just be like my concealing color and this one would be my brightening color. So I'm going to use this for all over my eyelid as a base before I do my eyeshadow. Then just to mention, I'm probably going to use this later when I contour. This is the Maybelline New York Fit Me Concealer and this is a bit darker so it's in the color 55. But it's not that much darker than me. But maybe a little bronze. Like if it matches my forehead a little bit, it should be my bronzing color. <laughs> and then also affecting me um, is a much more recent. Oh my gosh, this is very light. A much more recent um, event, and that was what Parkland's College did. So Parkland's College is the last school I went to. It is where I matriculated in 2014 so it was quite a few years ago oh my gosh i'm old <laughs> anyway um and i was there for two years so from grade 11 i'm going to be using this wet and wild sponge i've never had a sponge with a flat edge so i'm trying this one out and i told you guys i bought stuff like i bought stuff um yeah so i matriculated quite a few years ago and then I see a friend of mine posts, um, this is something, I actually should have wet this, but it's so soft, oh my gosh. Anyway, what is that? Are those two birds fighting? Okay, so a friend of mine posted, this is what they posted at my old school, and basically they had an assignment for grade 7 learners, I can't stress this enough, grade 7 learners to essentially pretend that they are slave owners and they're having an auction. This, I, you know when something is like just so bad and ridiculous that you just like, you laugh in, in like, I don't know. <laughs> anyway okay so basically they wanted the grade 7 learners to pretend that they're slave owners and they're having an auction for these slaves so they have to create an advertisement they have to create an advertisement to sell the slaves let's get an eyeshadow palette before I, I lose it I made this purchase. <sighs> I made this purchase. Makeup Revolution uh, palette. Integrity Wild Animal palette. I actually just got it because I saw it had a lot of colors. And I'm trying to be creative. I probably am not going to use colors today because, like, I don't think I'll get it right because I'm not in the correct mindset. But I really bought this palette because I like the colors in it. And also, it's such a cool looking um, palette. So this is what this is what it looks like. These little colors and everything, quite bright. Um, maybe I want to do a nudish look. Or maybe I'll do orange, yellow. Okay, I'm gonna like pop in the yellow at the end. So we'll come back to this palette. 
when I pop in the yellow because you know we are gold. So I'm just gonna go back to my revolution makeup revolution surf X palette. I always use this, it's so dirty, I'm embarrassed to show it, but this is what it looks like. Um, let's move on from that. And then I remember I said when I first received the hair, I think last year I received the hair that I got this set of makeup brushes um, with. I said I was going to use them in a makeup look and you guys said you wanted to see them in a makeup look so I'm going to use these brushes to do like my eyeshadow makeup. I don't know if I'm going to use them for my actual face, we'll see how they performed. Um, I've only ever used this one so far. so. We'll see how they they go. Right after I saw that, I went onto the Parkins College page. Thank God I don't follow them. Um, and I tried to see like what's going on. What's up? What's up? What y'all what y'all saying? What y'all doing? And um, they offered something that they call an apartment. I don't know. I, I really don't know. But basically, they said something to the effect of it is just worded. Um, it should have been worded differently, and it was just an insensitive activity. But the activity itself is actually labeled fun activity. And they also, oh my gosh, I'm getting louder. And they also, um, I'm just trying to think of a color to like do the crease and stuff. I'm sorry if I don't really show the colors and stuff like that. I don't think it's really about the focus on the makeup, but the colors are in these palettes, play around. Um, yeah. And they, they basically, Oh, also the activity literally had a Cadbury prize for the best adverts. They, they, they put down the activity. They said, this is a fun activity. Have fun with it. It's not for marks, but the best one will get a slab of Cadbury chocolate. Someone thought this through. I'm mentioning the Cadbury chocolate because I'm like someone thought about this and they were like, it's okay for us to do this. They even went as far as thinking about what the prize would be specifically. So it's not like it just accidentally happened to be a racist activity. No, they thought about it and they went ahead with it. And the apology that they tried to offer up really made people mad. It made everyone mad. I'm so irritated. I'm trying not to be, but I told you guys I was going to get emotional. And this is me getting emotional. And I don't want to be that person who's emotional because I don't want to watch this back in a couple years and be like, oh, I should have been more neutral. But it's like, I can't. I can't. Anyway, um, let's, let's get a bit of darkness in the corner. Yeah, so, yeah, it was just a whole bunch of we acknowledged, but no one's actually apologizing. At no point are they saying we are sorry. And honestly, it got to the point, so I was posting about it, and it got to the point where I feel like it needs to be a bigger issue. I think... It needs to be an issue that the whole of South Africa is dealing with at this point because it's not the only school. And we know that. It's not the only school that's doing this. It's not the only school that would offer up a we have knowledge statement as an apology and we just like take it and be like, oh, okay, you know, and we still send our black kids there and all these things. And I feel like at this point, no, put them on blast. Let everyone know. So, with that comes the Black Lives Matter movement that is something that I have always supported. It didn't start yesterday, like I said earlier on. It's probably not going to end soon either because, you know, people just... I don't know why it's so difficult to accept that like racism exists for some people, that fundamental point. I don't understand why that's difficult to accept. Then I don't understand why it's so difficult to, to like, at a, at a higher level to try and do something about it. It's like, y'all want black people to be put down. Y'all want it. Like, that's... That's all it is. And I'm not saying everyone before anyone goes and says, no, I know, we know, like, it's okay. But it's just like, y'all don't see black people. Y'all don't see, y'all don't see that. Y'all don't see us. We are, we are not, <laughs> we are not people, a single band. That's to say it in a more native language, because clearly you're not going to hear it in English either. But a single band, obviously. And... Yeah, so it is, it is, it is a sensitive topic, but it is a discussion that must be had, and it is something that we need to bring awareness to, talk about, and 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 have the difficult conversations about. For me personally, I it's very difficult. Like I said, main 
point of this video is also check in on the mental health. So for me, it's very difficult. Like I want to see more, I want to be educated, I want to know, but it's also very difficult to constantly have to see the painful truths around the world and and know what the world thinks of me. And I'm not making a personal me thing, like of me as a black person, as a black woman. It's, it's very difficult, but I also want to be involved because, you know, knowledge is power. And all honesty, like knowing helps, knowing helps you be able to deal with it, helps you make decisions, helps you in the workplace, helps you even at school. There are things that could be happening that you think, oh, that's just how I'm being treated. But then it turns out people are being racist towards you. But you wouldn't know that because maybe you don't have all the information and things like that. So I like to know, and I'm also a very inquisitive person, but it's also very difficult to constantly put in that pain in me, like to constantly read the pain and, and feel it and all these things. It's also very difficult. So I can understand not wanting to always be on social media. But I also, in the same breath, appreciate that this is happening. I love that this is, this is a topic that we are going and, and um, tackling head on at this point. I feel like it's, it's more head on than before. The protests in America, it's, it's great to see, you know. It's honestly great to see. But then we also need to bring it back home to South Africa specifically. <laughs> There's just so many nuances. There's just so many layers. Honestly, let me just put it that way. There's so many layers to this. And I saw a tweet, I believe it was, or TikTok, one of the two, and it basically said, be aware of the people who are willing to support Black Lives Matter but aren't supporting things that have to do with black issues in our country. So we're talking xenophobia or more specifically Afrophobia. We're talking when we talk about fees must fall, especially geared towards helping the black child or, you know, the previously disadvantaged child and that is due to them being black. Either way, it's, it comes back to that race part, you know? And they're willing to support Black Lives Matter in America and, and speak about George Floyd and all these things, but then when it comes to the issues here at home, they don't have the same energy towards black people. So that is something that we need to be aware of as, as just a society, as people and things like that. And I found that quite enlightening because I, I mean, I did think about it, but someone saying it made me be like, yeah, actually, like, yeah, let's let's talk about that. Y'all, y'all like Black Lives Matter, but then like, you guys are the first ones to also kill black foreign nationals. So which black guys do that? Uh? And that's a very harsh conversation that I really don't think we're all ready for right now. Um, but we need to think about that. We need to we need to touch a base on that. We we can't we can't act like that's not happening. You can't be like I'm here for this part, but then you're not here for the rest of what this whole movement means, you know what I mean? I think my eye look is kind of done, we're going to do the yellow at the end. So overall, I believe Black Lives Matter is so, so important. And it's deeper than just someone getting killed by the police in America. It is you as a black person when you were like four years old and someone said something to you or you know, you were told that no, your hair is ugly or something like that. That is part of the reason why Black Lives Matter is important. So that at that age, you're not already experiencing racism. And that is, that is racism. That's been pushed by white people that black things, black features, black attributes, traits are not beautiful or good enough or up there, they should be less than, that is racism. If that is made aware to you, that is someone being racist towards you. And it's important that we do something, make sure the world is changing 
and, and fight for equality. And I know in South Africa we have fought, so to speak, during apartheid and, and all these things, but it certainly did not end racism as a whole. And we can't feel like we should stop now because we're out of apartheid and it's been so X amount of years out of it. So it's, it's like, it's going to fix itself magically, you know. It's not. It's not. And I know it's very difficult because we deal with a lot of passive aggressive type of racism now because they're kind of like hiding it and all these things, but we need to, we need to stand up, we need to talk about it, and we need to fight. Okay, now we're going to go to my face. I'm going to come back to do the lashes and all these things later on. <laughs> um, we still got a lot of topics. Actually, I still have four more points to go through. Another topic that I want to touch on is that it's Pride Month, okay? It's Pride Month. That's, that's a good thing. Yes, it comes from hurt, pain, and struggle, but it's Pride Month. We are getting celebrated, and that is very important. That is great for us people of the queer community. Um, I know a lot of people always ask me, are you still into girls? It's such a weird question for me because I'm like, it was in a phase and I've, I've mentioned, so I do have a coming out video where I talk about my journey and everything. Um, sorry to pause. I'm going to start by actually um, priming with this Maybelline Baby Skin Primer. I went and bought it again because I was like, this has been the best one I've had yet. And then I'm going to use my MAC foundation. I realized that I left, <laughs> I realized that I left a lot of my makeup downstairs, so I just I'm using what I have up here. Um, so MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC46, and then I'm going to use these concealers. So I'm gonna start off with the Wet n Wild concealer in does this Okay, in medium slash deep tan underneath my eyes, I'm going to use the smudge in ivory to highlight, and then hopefully it's not too light because I'm really it's looking. And then I'm going to use this Maybelline Fit Me to sort of contour, and that'll be like sort of like the base basically. But yeah, um, like I said, I have a coming out story that explains everything. And no, I have not stopped being queer. Like I said, I don't like labeling myself as bisexual, but if it... You know what? Actually, no, I don't like labeling myself as bisexual. I'm queer. Full stop. People like to put labels that they can understand in other people, and that's not fair. So, yeah. And I have my reasons for saying I'm queer. I have my reasons for saying I'm queer, especially now that I've gotten older and I've explored certain things. I have realized that me saying that I'm just bisexual, this and that, is not going to be entirely true. And I'm also still figuring out more parts of my sexuality. Basically, pertaining to Pride Month specifically, I have never really been in spaces that I get to celebrate my sexuality. I've always wanted to go to Pride, but I've, I've never really had like enough friends to be like, oh, let's go to Pride, or I'll ask people to go with me to Pride, and then they just don't, which is really like sucked, honestly. Like I remember last year, I, I followed like Joe Pride and all these things, so I was like really looking forward to it, and when it got closer and closer, and I was like trying to recruit anyone to go with me, no one was saying it, it's like no one was really about it and eventually I ended up not going and this is like the fourth time now that I've been trying to go to Pride and no one wants to go with me um, so if you guys want to go to Pride with me in October let me know if there's gonna be one because of COVID it's just great to know that we can have a month where we celebrate ourselves and other people can start to celebrate us obviously it seems like it's a bit overshadowed now by Black Lives Matter which I'm not mad at because you know, it helps bring awareness to all of it. Black trans lives, black queer lives, and so on and so forth. So I don't think it's like an overshadowing in a 
negative way, I think that they should coincide more so now than they ever did before. So, yeah, it's, it's great. You know, let's, let's also have some positive pride images that we spread and messages and things like that. So, the next thing is obviously what really stopped the world this year. I mean, there are a lot of things that... But the one thing that really, really then stopped us, um, the COVID-19 pandemic. I think every time I mention, well, not every time, but like every time I start these heavier topics, I need to breathe, you know, just to gather myself. But yeah, COVID-19, wow. 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 If you have been outside, um, you would know or you'd have seen that like it's a it's kind of different things are different and you can tell that something has shaken up people you know like wearing masks it's so weird seeing that kids have to like go to school wearing masks it's it's actually kind of scary because it's like is this not our new normal we're not touching each other um people i've seen people see each other in shops and they recognize each other and they're about to like go hug each other because that's what you're used to and it's just like oh i can't and it's so crazy because humans generally just need human interaction anyway so it's just like is this the new normal is this what we're living with is is this how it's going to be forever also the other topic that i remember discussing with friends was what if in a couple of years like when the new kids are born, no one even cares about COVID anymore, you know, and no one, um, wow, that's light. No one really mentions it as a thing. The same way some people don't even know about like the Spanish flu, which was less, it was like a hundred years ago, it was 1918. And most people don't talk about the Spanish flu anymore. I definitely like to thank all the doctors and the healthcare workers, the nurses, um, Everyone during this time, I have quite a few people that I know that are in um, this work sector and I can tell you firsthand, it has been tough on them and it, it has taken its toll on some of them and you know, it's just nice to sometimes send a message and be like, yo, thank you for the work that you're doing, how are you doing today? Whatever you can to just uplift their spirits a little bit is really useful because I've, there are people at the end of the day too and you know they won't say it because they're basically the heroes in the story. Well, every day they are the heroes, but you know when it comes to COVID specifically, to COVID specifically, but they won't say it, but they're also scared and, and they're worried. It's like you're worried you're going to bring it back to you, your family and all these things. So I'm very thankful to them and I'm saying... If you maybe haven't thought about it and you know a healthcare worker or someone that has been an essential um, worker or anything like that that was putting their life on the line or risking their life, even like people working in grocery stores, they were interacting with a lot of people who needed essentials and things like that. Just like drop them a message, let them know, tell them you appreciate them and you see them and things like that. And I think because lockdown is slowly starting to go away, we're just like, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever. But you know, they have been in that position throughout, so it would be nice to just say something. Okay, so I went ahead and contoured-ish a little bit more with um, these two colours. So just a dab of this darker one um, all around my face. And then I kind of set my under eye with this yellow colour here. I didn't bake anything like that because I'm like, I have to wash this off in like an hour. Then I'm going to use, so that was the next um, contour and highlight palette. And then I'm going to use this Alec Gold Blush Collection. I feel like this is my OG. I always use it. I always use it. But I never used to like blush, so I didn't really buy blush. And now I like blush and I'm using this. And I don't know why I didn't purchase any blush, but anyway. Um, so I'm just going to use this lighter pink shade. And I'm just going to put that on the apples of my cheeks because I think blush is so cute now. I'm going to finish up the eyes and then we'll be done but to start talking about more positive things um to obviously help the different things that i've spoken about i'm going to be in the description below leaving some petitions to sign 
and like videos to watch where if you watch the whole video if you leave it like in a tab playing the and you let the ads play then like the ad sense will go towards the black lives matter movement and things like that and then also some links to more south african and home-based organizations that help black people and also towards the COVID-19 pandemic, Doctors Without Borders links and all these different things. I'm going to, the description box is going to be like a Harvard reference to a thesis, but it's going to be worth it. So I'm going to have all the different topics under there, um, pride, different organizations in South Africa that are geared towards LGBTQ, a plus awareness and support learning just everything i'm going to put everything 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 in the description box for you guys to go ahead enjoy and scour i know y'all at home i mean yes some of you are at school kind of like online schooling and all these things but you know if you just need something to read like for me i like sometimes just sitting and researching a whole bunch of things the description box is going to be for you and then just to bring it full circle to the mental health and how I've been and all that, um, the ways that I have really been able to cope and things like that is just by allowing myself to be in my own space, my own company and, and all these things. Um, sometimes you just need to introspect. And I realized that I, I had to actually like be at the bottom again for me to realize that I need to give myself some space and some time to be able to heal and, you know, be able to just carry on. Because like I said, this year was my year to just take a break and breathe so that's what i've been trying to do quite a bit and i'm so thankful to you guys that the last time i spoke about this you guys said take as much time as you need we're always going to be here and all that stuff so that's been one thing that's been keeping me like sometimes i'll have these moments where i'm like i should be back on youtube but then i'm like you guys had those words of encouragement and support and so that also has been helping me out so we're going to go back to this makeup revolution the wild Amelot palette, weird name, but I get it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use this yellow over here. Oh, that looks nice. <laughs> I'm gonna use this yellow in like the inner corner just to give this a pop of color. Oh, wait, y'all see that? I'm gonna quickly go ahead and also put on these kiss lashes that I also got and these are in the style look so natural as my lips are such crusty haters like if there's one comment that I get on all my videos about like a flaw that I have it's my crusty lips and I didn't choose this like this aren't a really nude look so I'm gonna try a combo which is usually what I do for my lips I just Essence Plumping Nudes Lip Gloss. I had it before and then I broke it and I just bought a new one because I had a dark one. Giving you attending the funeral vibes but also being the rich aunt at the funeral vibes. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just giving vibes. Also, I love this top. By the way, it's from Mr. Price. I actually got, I believe I got this top for $89.99 if I'm not mistaken. I got it for $8.99 and I actually bought it in small. It's kind of tight, but it looks good, so yeah. Okay, so I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. You enjoyed the chat and me doing my makeup while chatting, so it's like not too serious because I mean, I think we all know the severity of everything that's happening and I think we're all aware of the gravity that it all has, but I just wanted to give you a format where it's really like we're just talking, like we're doing makeup, chilling, you may be eating, whatever, like we're just chilling and we are talking about everything that's going on right now, which is very important. Again, 
I will be leaving everything in the description box, so it's going to be quite a full description box this time. But I do really hope that you guys find something of value in there, even if it's just one thing. Even if it's just one petition that you sign. Um, I've found that a lot of times when I go and sign one petition, I end up reading so many others and googling and learning. And I end up signing way more than what I thought, so that could also help, you know. Um, yeah <laughs> thank you so so much for watching thank you for getting to this point thank you for supporting me this far you are beautiful as a person inside and out and don't forget that you have value you are needed in this world you are worthy <laughs> just everything good that is you and i hope that you know that and if no one said it to you before I've said it to you now and I hope that you remember that through everything. Also, if you're busy with exams, I hope that the exam season is going well for you and you are a strong soldier um, in the midst of the chaos in the world. You are still able to focus on your future and that is amazing. And yeah. Thank you guys so much. I love each and every one of you that have watched this video, that support me and all of these things. And I hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also turn on your post notifications so you know when I post a video. Follow me on my other social medias which I'm going to link down below. But all of them are either Sipogazi William or Sipogazi underscore W. And yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.